and my name is Stephen Burkoff. I've been working in the theatrical industry for something like maybe 56 years. I've worked probably in half the theatres in England and Scotland, and I had a very close relationship with the Scottish theatre. I did work in Dundee and in Perth and in Glasgow. So I felt a very strong connection with the Scots. And it could be that I identified with them as being outsiders or outside of the British regime or establishment. The Scottish theatre seemed to give me the most cordial welcome and um, in fact welcomed me with open arms. You know, I worked in the theatre in Scotland and I used to use Edinburgh as a base for showing and exposing my most rabid, radical and passionate works. In Edinburgh, The Fall of the House of Usher, my adaptation from Edgar Allan Poe, and the latest I did Miss Julie versus Expressionism. I'd certainly premiered Hamlet at the Edinburgh Festival, plus my own play called Quetch with Anita Dobson and so many others. In between, in order to do my theatrical experiments, I'm an actor after all. I found that I was useful to the movie industry. I was young, vigorous, energetic. And so I suddenly did quite a bit of movie work in the early days. One of the first was Octopussy. I went to LA to do theater work. So whilst I was there, I was chosen to play the art dealer called Victor Maitland in Beverly Hills Cop. And so that led on to one or two other little movie adventures. But then I had to always return to the theater because the theater was the very fundaments of my being. Um, in 86, I was employed by the Citizen Theater, uh, which was one of the leading and radical and uh, professional theaters in Great Britain and I was doing two or three plays. And I found on the days off when I wasn't rehearsing, which was the last play, when you're doing the last play and then you're just performing at night, I had more my days off. So I went out with my camera and I thought I must somehow catch my experience of this amazing city. Now I didn't think of it as being something that would be some archival wonder I just did it for myself because I like to keep records. That's the thing I did. I record everything. I always kept two things in my bag, a notebook and a camera, my Pentax. So I would write every day and photograph every day. And of course, when I discovered the gorbals, I felt, hmm, it felt like a little bit like my East End home. It even smelled like it I sniffed the atmosphere, and it was something that moved me and touched me. So when I walked through the Gorbals, oh God, I found that the city was dying. And I've got a dying street. It's just a long shot right down, like a deep focus to the end of the street, which was just illustrated by solitary lampposts standing there like sentinels and the mold and the earth and the weeds are already sprouting out of the cracks in the pavement as the Gorbals was returning maybe to its origins. So that's one of my favorite pictures. And of course, there is a picture I particularly like next door the, the Citizens Theatre was this pub called the Seaforth Bar. Well, I rarely go to pubs. A, I don't like them. I think there's something about them which is a bit too rancid, too too much thinking of ale, and not didn't have the feeling of the European brasserie. But I don't know what I was doing in this bar. Maybe I followed the old this guy in. I have no idea. Did I go in for half a pint? And then I saw these three men separated by a partition, each drinking a pint, each with a cigarette. 
And Amir was a study of loneliness, a study of desperate need for company. Even if you're isolated, not speaking, not looking at them, but you're together. So probably that's an iconic picture for me. The children, of course, I love the children, seeing the kids, because they're always healthy, no matter what age, no matter what the environment. And they're behind the bars looking through. They were playing in a little bit of wasteland, but the bars also seemed significant. I imagined them in the future. And then there's a picture, just a man standing on a corner. His legs are a little bit bent. He's just waiting for the pub to open, waiting for that particular pub. I think it's the Seaforth pub. And he's just looking and waiting. And that's what we do when we've got nothing to do. No job, no career, no hobby no loved one, the natural webs of life that hold us together and suddenly we're left just stranded. So this is a study of a man and I'm reading maybe too much into it, but he's just standing. And I went back, walked back an hour later. He was still standing there and he was just looking across at me taking a picture and I felt really great pity for him but then the pictures bring back the sweetness and the sorrow and the anguish and the love people had for each other in Glasgow that that's what you felt it means I lived once in Glasgow